Now it's time to talk about cells in MicroStation. Cells in MicroStation are simply pre-drawn items that are stored in a cell library. If you're an AutoCAD user, the term blocks in AutoCAD, that's equivalent to MicroStation cells. There are cells that are provided in a cell library from headquarters, and that's what you should be using unless otherwise instructed. So we're gonna talk about placing a cell in MicroStation first. So under my home tab up at the top, we're gonna to go to our placement group, and in the upper right corner, this is where we have our place active cell. Now there's a little down arrow, I'm gonna click on that. You're gonna see there's a lot of different things that we can do with cells. We're gonna focus on place active cells. So I'm gonna select that first item. On my tool settings window, you can see I have an option to type in if I knew the name of the cell I wanted to use right here. To the right, I have Browse Cell Library, which we'll do in a moment. Now, when we place a cell, we can place it at a given active angle. We also can place it with a scale applied to it. Now, that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. We have an Expand button in the bottom right, so I'm gonna expand that, because we can see that, in addition, there's Place Shared Cells, and we don't use shared cells at Caltrans, so you shouldn't be using those. And then you have True Scale, which the cells you should be using should be coming from cell libraries either provided to you by Caltrans up in headquarters or by your group. And their units of measurement or units of resolution should be the same as the file you're in. If you're working in a file with survey feed, then the cells should have the same units of measurement, units of resolution as we would say. There's an option that if you get a cell library from an outside source, let's say it's a metric cell library, and your file is survey feed, if you check true scale, it will place the cell and do a conversion on it for you. Again, if you're working with cell libraries provided for you by Caltrans, you don't need to check this box. Now we also have options to mirror when we place a cell, to interactively place it, we can rotate it and or scale it. We also can flatten out a 3D cell if we wanted to. And down below that, you can see there's a number of options. We'll talk about association a little bit later. Now to choose the cell you wanna place, again, you can type in the name if you want to, or you can browse the cell library. And that's what we're gonna do now. When I click the little three dots, the cell library dialog opens. In the upper left corner, you're gonna notice it says cell library in brackets, it says none. That's because I don't have a cell library attached. That's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna to go to the file pull-down menu, and one of the options is new. We'll talk about that later. We also can attach a cell library, which we're gonna be doing a little bit differently. And then down below, these are provided by headquarters, cell libraries for the different groups. There's the CT cell lib underscore named levels, and the named levels, that's different than an older cell library that used to be called just CT cell lib, the old cell library is not using the new named levels. This cell library is, and this is the one you should be using. Now there's another one down below that, that's for right of way, and below that, that's for topo. We're gonna to be choosing the CT cell library underscore named levels, dot CEL. Now, a cell library is just a DGN file. We give it a dot CEL extension to let us know that it's being used as a cell library. So I can attach the cell library by just clicking on it from the list. And then you can see listed below are the cells in the cell library. Now there's about 700 cells in the cell library. Now if you know the name of the cell, you can just find it on the list there, scroll down, they're sorted. You're gonna notice a number of columns across the top here. The ones that you need to focus on are name, description, and at the far right, active. So we're gonna be looking for a cell, a tree cell, and I'm gonna select one of these cells and you're gonna notice over to the right a preview of that cell. Now once I've selected activating this list box, if I know the letter that my cell starts with, I can just type it in on the keyboard. So I'm gonna type on my keyboard the letter T. This will jump down to the T's. Now I can scroll further down. The one I'm looking for is called T3F. I'm gonna select it on the list. I see the preview here to the right. There are a couple of ways to make this the active cell. One, I can double click on it right here in the list box. And if I wasn't in the place active cell tool, it would make it the active tool and it would make it the active cell. The other way to do this is select it from the list and then these buttons up across the top here, 
The first one is set active cell, and I'm going to click that. And then in the last column, active, you're going to see that that is my active cell. And on the tool settings window, you're going to notice it says active cell, it says T3F. So I'm going to close the cell library dialog for the moment. I'm going to place the cell by just doing a data, left click. And if I wanted to place more, I could. But if I didn't, I could just hit reset, the right button on my mouse, which typically takes me back one step in a command. Well, the place cell tool only has one step. If I hit reset, it has no prior step to go to. So it will put me in the default tool, which is element selection. So I'm going to hit reset right now. And it puts me in the element selection tool. And if I hover back over this, you're going to notice that it says it's a cell and it's going to give me the name slash and it's going to tell me what element inside the cell I'm actually hovering over because a cell is basically comprised of a number of different elements. And when cells are created, they are generally created with the attributes that they should be placed at. Like for example, level, color, style, weight, things like that. So that's why you don't want to recreate your own cells. Use the existing ones that are there. Let's say I wanted to place a cell for a signpost. So let's zoom in a little bit here. We're going to go to place cell again, come up to our placement group, click place cell. And the name of the cell, in this case, I know the name of the cell. So it's going to be SGN1P. So I can type that in and I can hit enter. And I'm now placing this cell in my file. Now we're going to be placing the cell and we're going to place it, but we want to place it so that it is perpendicular to this curve. So we're going to be using the interactive option. On the interactive, you have three choices. You can scale and rotate dynamically, rotate only or scale only. We only want to rotate. So we're just going to use that. Now, as I place the cell, I'm going to place it approximately here. I'm going to do a data left click. And as I move my cursor, you're going to see that I can dynamically control the angle that it's placed at. Now I need to place this so that it is perpendicular to this line. So I'm going to use the AccuDraw shortcuts, which we talked about in prior videos. I'm going to type in RE that suspends whatever my current command is and puts me in the rotate AccuDraw by element. I'm going to data, watch my compass when I data on this line. You can see the compass rotated to be parallel or perpendicular. And now using AccuDraw, I can move it along one of the axes of AccuDraw, in this case, the red tick or X. And you can see I'm perfectly perpendicular to that line. I'm going to do a data, left click, and then reset, right click. And there's my cell placed. If you want to make modifications to a cell, you can drop the cell if that's necessary, or depending upon what you want to do, you may be able to change the cell without having to drop it. So let's talk about what can we modify about a cell. If I copy this, move it, rotate it, scale it, it's going to happen to all the elements because it's all one element to MicroStation. It's a cell. Now, if I wanted to change the color, it would change the color of the entire cell. That's generally not something we do. But if I did want to change the length of the sign, make it a little bit longer, we can use our stretch tool. So I'm going to zoom in a bit more. I'm going to go up to my manipulate tools. I'm going to go to stretch. And I'm going to place a little fence just around those vertices there, because that's what I want to manipulate or stretch here. On my tool settings window, there's a checkbox to stretch cells, and that's checked, and that's what I want. Now I'm going to tell it I want to stretch it from this point right here. I'm going to data, and you're going to see the AccuDraw compass appear. Again, the compass is oriented to the views X and Y. We need to rotate it to match the angle of one of these lines. Again, we're going to do an RE, data on one of the lines, the compass is rotated. Now I can just move it out along this axis. I'm going to type in six. I'm going to data reset, and now I've stretched the cell. Now that isn't dropping the cell, that's just modifying it and leaving it as a cell. So if I wanted to drop that, we would need to go to the drop element tool. So I'm going to go ahead and do an undo, control Z, and now we're going to be dropping it. So still under my home tab, I'm going to go to the very end to my groups, and I'm going to select the drop element tool. 
This is similar to AutoCAD's Explode. So I'm going to select the tool. On the Tool Settings window, you can see there's a number of choices. Complex is one that I do need to have selected because that cell is considered a complex element. It's not a line string or shape, although it may contain line strings and shape. At its highest level, it's a cell, which is a complex element. So I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor over the element. I'm going to Data, left click. It's now dropped. It's no longer a cell. If I hover over the elements, you can see their individual elements to MicroStation. So we're going to go ahead and do an undo. Now, as you saw, that we could edit that cell by doing a stretch. Other cells have text in them, and we can edit the text of a cell without dropping it. So we're going to see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Fit View. So Shift, right click. I'm going to go to Fit View. I'm going to zoom in on the bottom of my drawing down here. And I'm going to be placing in a cell that is actually a note. So I'm going to go back up to my placement group. I'm going to go to Place Active Cell. The name of the cell that I want to place, I know the name, so I'm going to type it in. It's N-O-T-E-3-3. I'm going to hit Enter. So the name stayed in the active cell field. That meant that it found it. Now, I don't want to place this using interactive, so I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to place my cell by doing a data, left click, and then right click. It puts me into element selection. and We're going to use that to actually edit the text in the cell. So as I hover my cursor over a part of the cell, you can see, it tells me it's a cell, note 33, slash. It says I'm hovering over text in the cell, and the text actually reads note colon. So I want to change that to notes. So in the element selection tool, I'm going to double click. That will bring up my text editor. I can then make changes to just that sentence. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an S. And then to apply that, I move my cursor in the drawing area. I do a data. And you can see the S is added to notes. I did not drop the cell. It remains a cell. So I'm going to go ahead and unselect that. This can be very helpful for the title block or border. People often thought that they had to drop the border in order to edit text within the cell. They don't need to do that. So if you need to put in project number and phase or unit number, you can just add that information in. So now we're going to see how can we go about creating a cell in MicroStation. So we're going to go to File Open. There's another file in our folder. It's called O2, Creating a Cell for a Detail. Now what we have is a detail, and this is not a cell. These are just elements in the file, and as I hover over, you can see they're just individual elements. Now this is drawn at one-to-one, -one. so here where it says one foot, that is literally one foot. This is a classic example of where you creating a cell could be helpful. Headquarters provides some cells for details, but Details can be very individual, unique to the individual, the group, the discipline they're in, things like that. So we're going to be making a cell out of this group of elements. The first thing we need to do is we need to either create or attach a cell library. So we're going to go back up to our place cell, and to the right, where it says Active Cell, we're going to click on the Browse Cell Library. Now we don't have a cell library attached, it says None. We could attach an existing cell library if we wanted to and add to it, or we can create a new one. So I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to click the File option. Just a word of advice. You don't want to create cells in the cell libraries provided by headquarters. They will update those cell libraries periodically, and if you add cells to that cell library, then they will be overwritten. So they don't suggest that you add any cells to the cell libraries provided by headquarters. So we're going to need to create a cell library. So I'm going to go to the File pull-down, and I'm going to select New. This is a location where MicroStation is told to look for cell libraries. So this is a good place to start. You could put a cell library any place you want, but we're going to put it in the folder that MicroStation is told to look in. So for the name here, I'm going to call this my first cell library. You could call it whatever you want. I suggest that the name you give it is descriptive of what is inside. So if you're doing construction details, you're doing landscape trees, whatever you're doing in your cell library, make the name say that. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. 
You can see that's now my attached cell library. And on these icons across the top, you're going to see in the far left, there's create, but it's grayed out. That's because I haven't met the requirements to create a cell. I first need to have a cell library attached. I then need to select the elements, either with a fence or element selection. I then need to define a cell origin. Then the create button will be enabled. So I'm going to go to my element selection tool. I'm going to select these elements to define the cell origin. If I come back up to my placement group and I go to the little down button there, about halfway down is define cell origin. Now what it's looking for me to define is the point by which I will place the cell at a later date. For AutoCAD users, the insertion point, this is similar to that. So I'm going to make my origin for my cell down here at the bottom of the detail, data. Now on my cell library dialog, the create button is enabled. So I'm going to select that. It now wants me to give it a name, description, and type. Name is the only mandatory thing you need to choose here. So I'm just going to call this detail. The description is optional. Type, you generally want to make this a graphic cell. Point and parametric, that's a different video. So we're going to leave it set to graphic. We're going to click the create button. On the left in the list box, there's my cell. And there's a preview of it. So now if I double click on this, that will put me in the place active cell and make that the active cell. So I can then place that in my file as a cell. I'll close my cell library. Now I would want to modify this, so I would need to drop it. So I'd go back up to my groups, go to the drop icon. I would select the cell. It's now individual elements and I'd be able to modify it. So that's creating your own cell library and putting a cell inside there. Now you're going to find that depending upon what group you're working in, there are groups that have created cells for their purposes. A classic example is landscape. I've seen in a lot of the districts or regions, they have created their own cell library that contains their cells. And for trees, it's a, it's a very common thing. So we're going to take a look at one of those. I'm going to go to my place active cell tool. I'm going to browse to attach a cell library. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to attach. Oh, look, you see it listed down below. It gets added to your list. That's because that was in a folder. We created the cell library there in a folder that MicroStation was told to look in. So it just added it to the list. So I'm going to go to attach a file. And then I'm going to go to my current directory because I have a cell library there as an example. And this is about trees, just as an example of a different cell library. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, click open. And then I'm going to stretch this out so you can see, because these are actually quite beautiful cells. So I'm going to select one on the left. You're going to see a preview on the right. So this is where somebody's taken some time. This was actually from District 5, where they've drawn in quite a few really nice details for some of the different trees. And you can see as I select them there on the left, so they have a number of these different pre-drawn examples so they don't have to create them again and again and again. So you'll see this with landscape, you'll see it with electrical, uh, in some of the other disciplines. So this is about cells. Hopefully this has been informative and we'll see you in the next video.